If you have ever considered starting your own e-commerce business or have been doing it for a while, what level do you fall into? And how do you go from one level to another? Let's go. Now all these levels are all in my opinion, of course, they're not like written anywhere and it's not set in stone. But I just wanted to share through my experience on the different levels that I've dealt with other people dealing with the e-commerce business. So let's start with the first one. And this is the absolute basic level at the foundation at the bottom, and I call this the good idea fair. This was a term frequently used in the military as called a person that has a lot of good ideas that everybody knew wouldn't actually work through with experience. These good ideas may come from people who find plenty of dropshipping and e-commerce ideas, but never actually take action. They have all these dreams about starting their own e-commerce business, but they never put their money where their mouth is. And they just keep talking the big game, doing the business, but essentially don't want to take any actions towards them. They just watch a lot of videos, maybe take a lot of courses, but they don't actually set up their store or find a product that's suitable for a certain market to get started. Now the level above that, I would call it the dabblers. These are people that maybe want to do it as a hobby, whether it's family members or just testing processes, but are not 100% serious and committed yet. They may be making some cash on the side, like maybe an extra 50 to $300. And it's actually quite easy to move to this stage with just some action. A lot of my content on this channel goes through how to go through step A, B, C, D, E of the whole fulfillment process. So it's definitely possible to do it. But essentially they pick a niche and a group of friends or families that they can start about generating this idea and actually executing it. Some examples of some hobbies is if you collect anime figures, you collect certain cars, collectibles, and you have a group of friends or a community that also likes these things, you can consider drop shipping some of these items. And essentially the biggest difference between the good idea fairy and the dabbler is that the dabbler is actually taking action and not just consuming content. Then it goes into the next stage, which are the part-timers. These are the people that actually take the steps further and don't do everything manually whereas a dabblers it's like hey mom do you want to buy this product or hey friend do you want to buy this product i know you like these kind of things are you willing to test this process no you're actually taking it a step further and you set up a website with a payment processor and you have some systems in place maybe not all of them from when you learned that you were you were a dabbler and they've also selected a specific niche in which they have an interest in or maybe their audience has an interest in to sell their products. Now these people that are part-timers can be selling on their own platform on Shopify, WooCommerce, or be selling on Amazon FBA. They have gone through the process multiple times and know the supply chain and how it works from start to finish. They may be making between an extra hundred to $1,500 a month. And these are just random numbers depending on the season. They've also have experience dealing with issues. Whereas like if it's a family member or a friend, they may be more flexible and understanding. But if you actually have a website set up, they expect you to deal with it in a more professional manner. Going from the dabbler to the part time requires you to realize that there is a bigger market for what you wanted to test in the dabbler phase. And there are different methods to reach that market. You can use advertising like Google, YouTube, Facebook ads, word of mouth, or simply by posting content on YouTube about the product. And these people usually take the whole process into their hands. They're really in the weeds of the operations of their business. I am currently in the part-time category, but I am working to transitioning to full-time. You just gotta respect that it takes time and respect the journey it takes to get there but I have definitely learned a lot of things in the part-time phase. Now, the next step in the pyramid are the full-timers. These people have established systems for their e-commerce systems. They usually don't handle tasks that they can outsource to other people like customer service, fulfillment, and etc. As in the part-time phase, you're usually deep into the weeds so that you know how the process works so that when you hire someone, you clearly know the expectations of what they need to fill because you've already put that hat on. So whereas in the part-time you had all the hats on, in the full-time you can still have all the hats on, but you may outsource some that aren't so revenue producing to other people, whether it's on Upwork, Fiverr, or you find someone locally like a friend or family. They are very experienced with their target market and know how to reach them. They know the language they use, the products they use, 
and how the customer journey is from interest to buying. They know that very well. They are usually well known within their niche and usually have predictable income ranges from 1,500 to 5,000 or more a month. They may also have established multiple products and multiple websites, whereas a part-timer usually dabs in like one or two products in the beginning. They've actually have different sources, not just coming from one website, but maybe multiple websites or multiple products on Amazon FBA. And they've only been able to build this through their experience in the part-time section. They also spend a lot of time developing their business and always seeking new ways to innovate. Now to go from part-time to full-time can take years. It starts with hiring out the right people to do the tasks that don't make your e-commerce more money but are still needed to get it running. And at this phase is where you stop wearing all the hats like the accountant, the customer service, the lead generator, the innovator, the development the software, the tech lead, and focus more on the business side to make it more profitable and more expandable in the future. And now, the last phase, the absolute tippy top of the pyramid from full-timer are the automators. Now, by all means, it is not easy to get here. I just can't take it when people say it's so easy to do on these like Facebook ads I see or these YouTube ads. It's not, it takes a lot of experience and work. Do not take this lightly. This is the highest level in my opinion, and they have developed hands-off methods where they can run their business from essentially any location. So they're not stuck in one location. They can run their business in a cafe shop overseas or on vacation, whatever. They have successfully delegated the most time-consuming tasks to other employees. They also have systems set up to make their business more professional. For example, if you call their phone number, it will sound like it's a real business with different options and they will reach the right people to handle your problem. They also have systems for marketing, whether it's emails, Facebook ads, YouTube, to always bring in some more clients for they know how to keep that clientele coming in. They clearly know how to automate the supply chain process, especially when it comes to custom products like APIs for shipping, APIs for product fulfillment, and APIs for after sales service. I am currently in the middle of automating my store, but there are still some things that haven't been automated like shipping, which I'm still working on. So as I mentioned before, it's not so easy. You can just snap your fingers and everything is done. You need to have experience and know how to connect all these dots together. Now getting to this level requires building connections with the right people that can help you automate processes. For example, having the right website developers, front and back end, full stack, build your website, having the right shipping partners to ship to certain markets to make sure that all customs is taken care of, all duties have been paid and there are no issues. Having the right payment agents or the right systems to be able to pay your suppliers immediately and automatically without having to deal with all kinds of rules and regulations that maybe people may not know how to deal with. They have experience with their target market and know the tricks for customs, especially when it comes to duties and regulations to be able to pay the minimum amount of taxes and fees and get the largest profit margin. They know how to negotiate clearly with suppliers and other logistics services to get the biggest bang for their buck. And through their experience, they know how to quickly turn a good idea into a proven business model through their actions from their experience of setting this whole thing up. Now, I hope to reach this goal within the next five to 10 years. I gotta respect the process and it takes time and I love learning the processes as we go through step A, B, C, D, and E, and so on. So let me know what level you consider yourself located in this pyramid. Have you started to take action on your e-commerce idea? Or are you still in the good idea fairy stage? Let's make sourcing easy.